Hi, you're back with Dr. Kelly, and we're going to talk about why these bugs are so powerful. Now, you just completed a quiz that gave you a score, and the higher the score, the more likely you're going to need significant change to help your bug population. But the good news, is, as you will remember, is that the diet is the key factor, and I feel so confident that people can change, rebuild, improve, and transform their gut. It may take more work for some than others, but there's some tremendous opportunities today that didn't exist some years ago. Let's remind ourselves about the particular activity of our bugs. As I mentioned, they detoxify our body, and they really do have your back. One of the things they neutralize are genetically modified foods. What are these things? They're, they've basically been genetically engineered with other living things like viruses or bacteria, parts of plants, parts of animal animals and in today's world corn and soy are great examples of that and by extension about 80 percent of our processed foods have corn and soy so we're constantly adjusting GMOs which are considered toxic to the body and we are going to have reactions in our gut to trying to in trying to fight these things interestingly the United States is one of the countries that still allows GMOs and 60 others have said no I believe that'll change in the future I spoke briefly about the importance of immunity. Now, in the Greek derivation of immunity is really to be free from liability. And that would be nice if we had an immune system that allowed us to live life without any consequences. But I want to remind you that the bugs in your gut really have a large role to play in how effective your immune system is, and they prevent it from going rogue. What do I mean by that? Some of you have heard the term autoimmune disease. Basically, that is when the immune system is so overwrought and so challenged that it stops recognizing our cells versus other cells and it starts to destroy our own cells. Conditions that include that are rheumatoid arthritis, systemic lupus, type 1 diabetes, that condition children may be born with, Hashimoto's thyroiditis, where really the gluten um, plays a huge role in setting them up for an autoimmune reaction. Scleroderma, where the skin and joints become inflamed and hardened. Pulmonary fibrosis, which uh, really challenges one's ability to breathe. And autism is being thrown in that spectrum as well. The key point I want to make here is that your immune system controls how much inflammation in your body. And if it's effective, you will have a very good sense of how you feel. You won't be sore all the time. But if your immune system's not working and your bug population is challenged, you'll, you may have a set point that says, I'm always sore, I'm always tender, I'm always stiff. And understand that inflammation equals pain and your weak links will remain painful if you don't change your diet and this is where my patients get very confused say they have a disc herniation that's not healing or a tendonitis in their elbow that's not healing or a meniscus surgery six months ago that still hurts or trigger points in the head that continue to be sore with with touch causing headaches or a sprained ankle that stays stiff and sore what they have to recognize is that if you change your inflammatory milieu, your ability to heal improves. And that really is the entire reason for this webinar series. Remember, what goes in your mouth will determine your inflammation, period. There is no one else to blame. While we like to blame others, ultimately it is our lack of education that has us not make this connection, hence the reason again for this webinar. And before I conclude this particular webinar, I want to talk about neurotransmission. The gut plays a huge, huge role in how your body feels. The brain of the gut and the brain that we know today located in our head have a very strong connection. We've heard the terms, I had a gut feeling, my gut told me, I just, I don't know, I didn't have the guts for it. Well, interestingly enough, your guts play a role in how we feel and think. And they make 80% of serotonin, which is the neurotransmitter that antidepressive drugs are trying to alter and modulate. And many studies today are suggesting that antidepressants are much less effective than changing your diet, which to me is extremely good news. So let's talk a little bit in Module 4 about anatomy and unveil the mystery of the leaky gut that some of you may have heard about. So stay tuned.